Manchester United have been linked with so many managers since the sacking of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I've kind of lost count, both on an interim and a permanent basis. But in this video, we are talking about reports from yesterday that emerged that Manchester United have interviewed former Barcelona manager Ernesto Valverde over the interim role. What I'm going to do in this video is run through the full story of everything for you. Run through all the reports, where they started from. Are they reliable? Who's been saying what? I'm going to cover all of that in a bit of detail for you. As well as that, we're going to take a look at Valverde's career. What did he do at Barcelona? Why was he sacked from Barcelona? That's what I'm going to run through after that. Then we're going to take a look at his tactics and see whether or not or how maybe he could suit the role of Manchester United's interim appointment. United want to get Pochettino in right now, but what we're doing is we're planning just in case that doesn't happen. So in this video, I'm going to run through everything on Valverde so you don't have to look anywhere else. Please, if you do learn something by the end of the video, consider dropping a like on it and subscribing to United People's TV. But let's get straight into this Valverde story. And let's go back to where it started. And that was from Fabrizio Romano and from Jamie Jackson from The Guardian. Just before Manchester United played Villarreal, this story came out. Manchester United have met Ernesto Valverde with Pochettino still in sight. So the, the, the crux of the story here is that Manchester United have interviewed Ernesto Valverde, but that Pochettino still remains the top choice. That's, that's something that's said everywhere. If we take a look at the article here, it said Manchester United have interviewed him. Uh, it's understood that Verde, as I said, has discussed it with John Murto. Now, John Murto is leading these interviews. And for me, that's an important point here. Our director of football should be, you know, directing the football. So to hear that he's in conversations with potential interim managers means, you know, he's actually doing his job properly. So in that sense, I'm happy about that. And we can see down here that Valverde is understood to be one of five candidates on the list for the interim role, basically, if we can't get Pochettino. Now, Rudy Garcia seems to be another one on that list. Andy Mitten this morning confirming that Manchester United have also interviewed him. And it was John Murta that did that interview too. I'm not covering him in this video. Maybe I'll do a separate video on Rudy Garcia. But it seems like Rudy Garcia and Ernesto Valverde are two of the names on that list. As I said, the stories really started and came from Fabrizio Romano and Jamie Jackson. Fabrizio here saying Manchester United have had direct contact with Valverde and interviewed him. No decision has been made yet, but he's one of the five names on the list. You let me know in the comments. I asked in my live stream this morning, but you let me know in the comments who else you think is on that list. If it's Valverde, if it's Garcia, that leaves room for three more names. Who would you put on that interim list? I'm not talking about Poch or Ten Hag or people that might come in on a permanent role, but on an interim role. You let me know about that in the comments. Let's see how this story continues to develop, though. We go over here and we see James Ducker from The Telegraph saying Manchester United have held talks with Ernesto Valverde over the interim role. And we scroll down here and we see what he's saying. Valverde is understood to be one of a number of candidates under consideration for the interim role if they can't, if we can't, sorry, get Pochettino. Um, and John Murto, as I said, I'll repeat this one more time because I keep repeating myself now, but I'm just happy to see and happy to hear that John Murto is starting to be involved in these conversations. I was very surprised to really hear throughout the entire Solskjaer situation, him being sacked, that John Murto wasn't really involved in any of those conversations. I found it weird. You know, what's the point in getting a director of football if he's not going to direct these sort of footballing decisions? And it only went to sort of give extra... Uh, credence to the idea that he's only a yes man. He, he was brought in to appease the fans rather than somebody who's actually doing a job. And this role of John Murto is so important now because between Solskjaer and this next manager, he's got to be the one that makes sure there's continue, con continuity sorry, between the two rather than the sort of U-turns we've been doing between managers from Van Hal to Mourinho, Mourinho to Solskjaer. We have to make sure this next one is more of a continuation down a path rather than a U-turn. And Murto is crucial to that. But as we look at these stories as they continue to develop, Simon Stone reiterating the same as everything else, everybody else, sorry, that Valverde, he's on Manchester United's list and we've had a talk with him. We go down here, he said Manchester United have contacted Valverde over an interim manager role. He's one of a handful of candidates to take charge to the end of the season. Simon Stone here, though, different to all the other reporters, saying that Manchester United are focusing on bringing him in on an interim basis and are focusing on an interim manager rather than Pochettino which is a little bit different to what everyone else was saying. I'm not sure whether there's any truth in that. I hope he's wrong because I think if Manchester United can go and get Pochettino right now, we should go and get Pochettino right now. But the fact that we're planning and holding interviews, maybe we're holding interviews. It's not like we're just uh, being linked with these managers. We've held an interview with Valverde. We've held an interview with Rudy Garcia. 
United are actually acting like a football club here and actually getting a plan B just in case plan A and Pochettino doesn't work out. You've got to be happy at that sense, right? But Valverde, is, is he someone that you want to see manage Manchester United? What we're going to do now is take a quick look at how Valverde has got on in his career. And if you're looking at this, Valverde, has won, he won back-to-back -back titles with Barcelona. He's got two La Liga titles there. He's won the Copa del Rey as well. He's also won the Greek League three times, and that was with Olympiacos. We go down here and we take a look at his managerial career. As I said, 145 games for Barcelona, over 200 games for Athletic. Is that Bilbao? It is Bilbao. Valencia, Olympiacos. I mean, he's a very, very experienced manager who has won trophies. And for so many people, they look at um, Mauricio Pochettino and they just simply rule him out because he hasn't won anything. They say there's no way you can get him in because, you know, Manchester United needs to go on and win things. If that's the case, then Valverde is someone that you can't rule out because he's won back-to-back -back league titles with Barcelona out in Spain. But the, uh, but the issue that a lot of people are going to have with Valverde, and that's what I'm going to get onto right now, is he was sacked by Barcelona. Why was Valverde sacked if he was that good a manager? Surely Barcelona would have kept him on if he was the right manager. And why is he out of a job now? Fair questions. Let's dive into that and let's look at the full story behind his sacking. Because Valverde, he was a success at Barcelona domestically. European football certainly hurt him. And there are two famous results that we have to remember that happened under that happened under Valverde at Barcelona that certainly did not help his cause. And that's in the Champions League. And we're looking at what happened there. They lost against Roma. And they lost against Barcelona. Two years on the trot. Remember that? When they were 4-1 up going into the 4-1 no, no, up after the first game at, at the new Camp. And then they lost away at Rome. Manolos, wasn't it? Was it Manolos? I think it was. Yeah, Costas Manolos. He celebrated the goal. And then, of course, the year after that game against Liverpool. And that's the only thing I'm going to mention about that. But the European results and Barcelona's Champions League failures sort of outweighed the success that he had domestically. And that really, really hurt him. We go on to this Sky Sports article, see what else they're mentioning. They're talking about poor defensive away records. Uh, they're saying here the reasoning behind Valverde's appointment was in the first place was based on the glowing references from the likes of Guardiola, Iniesta and Enrique. We go down here and this is something that I suppose will concern United fans. And I'll be honest, it would concern me as well. That sentence there for a club that prides itself on fast paced, incisive and possession based football. The pragmatism that set in during Valverde's reign eroded confidence. And it goes down there saying it was the seventh time in 10 away La Liga games that season. The Barcelona failed to keep a clean sheet with 11 goals conceded in that time, winning on just four occasions. So Valverde, he was successful in winning back-to-back -back titles with Barcelona. Nobody can question that. We're talking facts right now. But there was a, a, a bit of a, a juxtaposition with Barcelona. And you know how United fans, we, we argued about the United way with Van Howe. I would say that's a similar way to what happened with Valverde. Somebody, well, Valverde had certainly better results. As I said, he won the, he won the league twice. So I, I think Valverde may have been a slight scapegoat to the situation, which has continued to unfold for years after he was sacked. Uh, and the whole, everything that's unfolding at Barcelona still at the moment, because he did win league titles, but maybe it wasn't in the way that Barcelona wanted to. But in terms of, in terms of the style of play, if we take a look here, this was his formation that he used in the 2017-18 season. You've got Suarez, Messi, Paulinho in the middle with Iniesta, Sergio, Busquets and Rakitic. If you want to look at the shape, you could try and call it a 4-3-3. But with Barcelona, things are fluid, things are moving. And they do play quite narrow. And the width would always come from the overlap in fullbacks in Sergi, Roberto there and Jordi Alba. But having looked and done a bit of research into Valverde, he's not, some, he's not a manager who comes with a massively clearly defined style. Uh, but I think if you're looking at... If you're looking at uh, interim manager options, which is what Manchester United are doing right now. As I said, we've interviewed Valverde. We've interviewed Rudy Garcia. I don't know who else is on that list. I'm surprised we're not going for Rangnick, but maybe that's because he would want to go into a position of power above that after the interim role. And that's where Manchester United don't want to give that power away from the board. And that will be down to Ed Woodward and the board trying to protect their own interests, which has to stop at some point if we're ever going to run as a football club. But Valverde... You can't rule him out in terms of the titles he has won. He's won back-to-back -back La Liga titles. He's won the Copa del Rey. 
and he's won three Greek titles with Olympiakos. He is a man who has experience of winning. He is a man who has experience of managing some of the best players in the world. For sure, he did that at Barcelona and did it successfully, domestically. But it was his failures in Europe that, I, by the looks of things, that really hurt him the most. And a bit of a more of a pragmatic approach to football, which went against the Barcelona way. Now, would that put you off Valverde as, a, as an interim option? Or do you think Valverde is someone that should be considered as an interim option for Manchester United? Uh, look, if Manchester United had a full-blown, obvious direction and plan, we wouldn't be linked with all these managers. As I said in my live stream this morning, I was kind of half joking, but I'm not, I don't think. We could genuinely make a predicted 11 out of the managers linked with the job right now. The only two we've interviewed, though, that's a step ahead, is Valverde and Rudy Garcia. Now, I might do another video like this on Rudy Garcia. Drop a like on video if you'd like me to do that. But what's your opinion on Valverde? As I said, is the fact that he's won those titles, does that mean that you think he would be a good manager for Manchester United? You take a look at his experience. He's managed hundreds of games in different countries and he has huge experience of working with big name players he used that sort of 4-3-3 style at Barcelona in the 2017-18 season but it did develop and there's not one particular style that you can associate with Valverde but is he the manager that can come into Manchester United and do the job we need on an interim role until the end of the season you let me know what you think about that in the comments below make sure you drop a like on the video subscribe to United People's TV if you would it would really help the channel um, but Valverde is an interesting one and I'm sure there'll be plenty of debate so you let me know what your opinion is in the comments but United have interviewed him he's on the short list if United don't get Poch and something stops that from happening and the only thing that really in my opinion that will stop it from happening is Zinedine Zidane not going to PSG and if that does happen we'd have to look at interim managers and Valverde it's a debate we've got to have so let me know what you think in the comments below and take it easy everyone